Hello, my name is Marcus T. Anthony and uh, this is a Diary of the 21st Century Mystic and this is my first uh, video entry for 2013. And you might have noticed I haven't done very many video entries of late. Over the uh, Christmas and New Year break I haven't been doing much at all, to be honest. And uh, uh, if you've ever followed a few of my other videos you'll notice uh, that I am actually a mystic. I'm someone who follows my inner guidance when I uh, make decisions and there's a few things that have influenced me to be more relaxed and, uh, and uh, more receptive over the, over the new year period. One vision that came to me one night when I was sleeping actually, I saw this, uh, this piece of paper which came into my mind's eye, just a square piece of paper and uh, it was actually a, a series of moons um, depicted on the paper going in a kind of crisscross like this. And uh, While well, that, that might mean much to you, uh, and logically it might mean much, it was very clear what this meant to me, and that was that there are there phases of energy through life, and there are seasons um, from, from day to day, and month to month, and year to year. And uh, it's very important that you align yourself with this energy. If you try to do things when the energy is flat, or more receptive, or slower, then you're not going to be very successful. So I sense very strongly that the energy over the, the new year was to just let go and relax and, and enjoy life. And uh, interestingly, around the, the 2nd of January, the energy shifted. It was very, very noticeable. And uh, I've started to get back more into, into creativity. Um, I'm not going to explain too much about what I'm going to do in that respect for the rest of this video. I'm just going to explain uh, to how I came to be where I am now, because I'm now in a new place in, in Greensboro, no, uh, north of Melbourne. It's actually a suburb of Melbourne, a very nice suburb. And then I'm going to explain to you something about the law of attraction. Uh, one little incident that clarified something for me. Um, I was living with my brother in a little town called Morwell, uh, east of Melbourne, about two hours out of, out of Melbourne. It's a very small town, and to be honest, it really wasn't a great time for me there. The energy in that place really wasn't suitable for me. And uh, I woke up one morning and that old Beatles song, Nowhere Man, was going through my head. It's strange how this song tends to pop up in my mind uh, whenever I'm, I'm really not uh, following my heart or, or following my intuition. So, you know, he's a real nowhere man, living in his nowhere land, etc., etc. So I realized that I had to get out of more will. And it took me about six weeks after that time. I really probably should have gotten out earlier because the energy was quite flat and I started to feel a bit depressed to be honest because I wasn't following the energy. So it really is very important with whatever you do um, with the creating and doing actions and moving forward in your life that you, you listen to your intuition otherwise you get stuck. So anyway, I had to move out of Morwell. I knew the energy wasn't going, wasn't going to Melbourne. Uh, it was pretty stressful. I went to Melbourne uh, to look for a place. Uh, I spent about uh, four days looking around. I stayed uh, at a friend's house during that time and uh, it, it was stressful because um, I had not much time to find a place and I was really, really, really tired of looking around trying to find somewhere to live after being in Australia for, for three months. And uh, I, I really needed a bit of help so I, I put it out in better spirit. I got a call one day from a guy from a website where I had my name down and he said, uh, come around uh, um, and check out my place because the website was, you know, find, it was about finding accommodation and uh, sharing accommodation uh, was, uh, was what that website was all about. So I went around to his place, it took me about two hours to find that the place and uh, he, he told me that he was uh, into the spiritual movement and uh, his place was it well, it seemed okay to me, and I spoke to him for about an hour, and uh, at the end we seemed to be getting on pretty well, and I said I'd be interested in moving in, and he seemed pretty happy with that, and I asked him directly would he be interested in, in me moving in there, and uh, he said yes. Anyway, so I shook hands, got on the bus to leave the area, and uh, as the bus was, you know, a kilometre or so down the road, my uh, my buzzer rang on my phone on my um, messenger and uh, he sent me a message and said, oh, sorry Marcus, the, 
the previous person who was interested in the room has now taken it. So that was a complete waste of time. I was a bit pissed off, to be honest. Uh, so after that, I, I was really feeling um, a little bit annoyed. The next day, though, I went around to a, a very nice house in a suburb called Northcote in, in Melbourne. And it was a bit expensive. Um, the woman I spoke to there, uh, in the house, seemed like a pretty nice woman to me. And it really was a very nice, nice area. Um, I seriously considered staying there. But that night, again, another vision came to me. And I saw this woman's face. And around her head, going around here, around her head, was uh, this tight patch of like grey, frizzy hair. Even though she didn't have any grey hair. And uh, it was just an immediate image that came into my mind. And I knew exactly what that was telling me. It was telling me that there was a kind of a severe side to this lady's personality, which she didn't really show me during our little uh, time together in the house. And it could create problems. She was probably a little bit uh, uptight. So, on the basis of, uh, basis of that vision, I decided to let, to let that go. Which again was a bit annoying because um, I was really desperate to try and find a place. But that afternoon, that afternoon I got a phone call from someone um, in Greensboro, which is where I'm now living. It was actually the, the woman who owns this place. And uh, I checked the energy on it and it felt good. So I went out there, or out here. And to cut a long story short, um, this is where I, where I now am. Um, uh, she was quite agreeable for me to live here. I really liked the place. And I have to say that uh, after being here for now for three weeks, it's, uh, it's a fantastic place to live. I mean, the, the area around here is full of natural beauty. There are, there's a nice creek where I meditate. There are kangaroos. There are, there, are, there are birds all over the place. It's only 30 minutes out of the town as well. And the rent is, is um, quite agreeable. I've got a lovely big room here. I mean, I couldn't ask for more. So I've been really blessed to get this one. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. So that's a really good uh, piece of news because this, this, uh, this big room that I'm in now, which you can kind of see around here, at the back there, it sort of goes around you. You can't see all of it, but uh, it's a really, a really good place for me to, to return, uh, to develop ideas, and uh, the flatmates here are really nice. Um, I'm staying with uh, three other people at the moment. Okay, so um, that's, that's one bit of good news. And um, the one other thing I was going to talk about is it was the, uh, the law of attraction. You know, the, the kind of thing that you see in The Secret, uh, the video and book series. And one thing that's always concerned me about The Secret is I think it's a little bit simplistic. And one particular facet of, of the law of attraction became pretty, uh, was reinforced again just, uh, just last Saturday. And it happened when I was playing a game of cricket. I've started playing cricket here uh, in, uh, in Greensboro with a local cricket team. And I'm having a good time. I really enjoy playing cricket, even though I'm a bit older now than I used to be, and it's a bit harder to run around. Um, uh, well, anyway, to cut this story uh, shorter, uh, I woke up in the morning on the day of the match, and I was looking forward to going out and playing. But there was this, um, this sense of... Uh, well, let me go back. I was actually uh, trying to envision, envisage um, in my mind getting a, a good score going up to bat in, in, in this game that I was going to play. So I used the process of visualization to try and manifest, seeing myself you know, scoring runs, hitting the ball well, using some positive affirmations, you know, such as, you know, I'm a fluent and uh, uh, joyful bats and I score runs easily, etc., etc. The kind of thing they would suggest for you to do when they're trying to manifest uh, a particular goal in the secret or, or the law of attraction. I when I woke up the next morning though, there was this this feeling of the what I can only call dread um, in me. And the energy was really quite heavy and not not, not so good. And um, when I looked at it, um, there was a strong energy. When I read the energy field, it was a, it was about playing in this game in part. But it also reflected some other issues through my life, like a sense of self doubt. Um, a belief that I'm not good enough, and specifically to do with cricket as well. And uh, so anyway, I went on to the game, 
and I was padded up to bat at number three, it's the first drop, because I'm not, not too bad a batsman actually, in a, in a team that I play, I'm one of the better players. And uh, before I went out to bat, when I was waiting for the first two batters, someone to get out, so I would go in and have my turn to bat. I projected my energy into the innings that I was about to play, and I could just sense free clue from the energy that I wasn't going to be in very long. It was just, just the knowing. And uh, that kind of frustrated me a bit because I wanted to do well. And I was starting to think, well, is the only way that I can work around this energy? Can I change it so that maybe I can, you know, get a big score, 50 or 100 runs or something like that? So I just went back through my mind and I envisaged myself um, scoring runs freely. I used some of those affirmations, etc., etc. And someone did get out. I went out to take my turn in batting. And as I went out, I, I felt the energy again, and I could just feel that I wasn't going to be in there too long. And I thought, well, okay, you know, this is just part of the energy of, the, of this day, how it's going to unfold. And if it happens that way, well, I'm still, I'm still going to love myself. I'm not going to beat myself up because I got out, I didn't do as well as I wanted. I'm not going to um, curse life or, or to judge uh, God or whatever you think is in control of the universe. I'm just going to go with it. And I made a promise to my, to my inner child, if you like, that it was going to be okay no matter what happened. And uh, well, as it happened, I was actually batting pretty well. I had quite a few good shots. Um, and uh, well, they went to fielders. I ended up just getting five runs. And I did get out uh, for five after uh, hitting those few good shots. And uh, as I was walking off the field, as usual, as I normally do when I when I play cricket and don't get a, a good score. I was pretty disappointed in myself and uh, I was beating myself up a bit. But when I went back to sit back down on the sideline, I, I just let, let it go eventually. And I just returned into my, my, my state of presence, and, which means I just put my energy back into the now. And I, and I spoke to that disappointed little boy in myself and, and told him that it'll be okay, there'll be another time. And the energy just wasn't there today. So what did I take from all this? Well, I sensed an energy um, that something wasn't going to be successful, and uh, I, I tried uh, my best to move around that energy, but I, I was unsuccessful in changing the energy pattern. And what it, what it shows to me is that sometimes that it just some things are just not going to work according to the energy, and it's you might as well just go with it, enjoy the process, learn whatever you can, and then move on to the next thing. You can't just have whatever you want. This is a distinction about the law of attraction that is not clearly stated in, um, in the secret and many popular New Age books. You know, sometimes there just isn't energy on, on a particular outcome or goal. Or you, you just don't have the energy or the belief structure that, uh, that will help create that goal. Or there's a lesson for you to learn, uh, something for you to align with within the non-achievement of that goal or with something else happening that's different. Now within that failure, if you want to call that in the game of cricket, you know, I believe that what was happening is that the part of my, my self-doubt was, uh, was creating the outcome. And it was just the process of aligning with that, um, not judging it as bad or me as inadequate as a person, um, or cursing the gods, and just allowing that to be what it is in, in this moment. There I am. I'm an imperfect person. I'm not uh, the world's greatest batsman. Sometimes I fail. Sometimes I'm not good enough to do what I want. And that's okay in that moment. And uh, that's another really important distinction that I've really, really started to come to understand in these last few weeks. And I have to thank um, Anita Mujani, uh, the author of the book Dying for Me, Me, for, for this one. I, I've known this idea for a while, but and she really clarified it. This for me. I met her in, in, in Hong Kong uh, a few months ago, and one of one of the things that she learned from her near-death experiences, and she was dying of cancer, and, and she had this uh, wonderful near-death experience where, she, where all the spiritual knowledge was unfolded to her. One thing that she was told is that you know, she was a magnificent being, and she was withholding love from herself. And what I've seen over you know, the last few months is that I, I withhold love from myself. Through subtle judgments, it's a very subtle thing. For example, you try, I try to uh, get a good score in cricket, and it, and it doesn't work. 
so there might be a subtle voice saying, I'm not good enough, why did you fail, you should have done better. But in fact, then there comes another level of judgment. Oh my God, I'm judging myself. That's not good, I shouldn't be judging myself. So then you add another layer of judgment to that. So the ego um, just starts to reject itself over and over. You judge the judgment of the judgment, and of that next judgment, and so on, and so on, and so on, forever and ever. It's what I'm, what I'm really starting to do with my own life now is just to see those levels of judgment. But not trying to change them or to judge it, but just to allow it to be. Okay, God or the light. And I just like to envision a, a light in front of me in my mind's eye as being God or infinite love. And just saying, okay, in this moment, God, I, I feel judgment. I, I, I judge myself. And that's okay. I, I still feel beautiful as a person. I'm a lovable person. I don't have to be perfect. I release the need to be perfect. And uh, so you're not trying to get rid of the judgment. You're not trying to get rid of the self-doubt. You're just opening it up and shining light on it. Okay, because that, that light, that God is not really separate from you. It's just a part of you. And this is how we, um, we tend to withhold love from ourselves uh, by rejecting ourselves again and again. You know, the greatest gift that any of us can ever give to anybody, or even ourselves, is the gift of, of love and acceptance. And coming to this awareness of how we judge ourselves and reject ourselves, and how we judge our lives. You know, it might be a, a failure in cricket. Oh, this didn't happen the way I wanted it to. As soon as you judge that, you're rejecting life. You're rejecting what, what God or the universe has given you in that moment. You are choosing to reject what has been given to you or shown to you. So you cannot fulfill your, your destiny here on this earth to be, a, to be a, a human being aligned with divine love when you do that. And if we're really honest with ourselves, we can see ourselves doing that over and over and over again. And I've been on this journey for 20 years. And some of the subtle levels of this are only just becoming clear to me now. But then again, I've always been a bit of a slow learner. So, um, so that's where I'm at. I'm going to explain a little bit more um, about what I'm going to be, want to be doing this year in, in a later uh, video. So um, I hope you've learned something um, from this little video today, just as I've learned a few things in this last few weeks. And I look, I look forward to seeing you again in my diary of the 21st century. See you then.